environment we are in today, I think we should ex expect uh, to watch this space very carefully because when we say uh, an event like Brexit, mm -hmm. uh, we need to know how it is going to be for different players. I mean national banks, mm -hmm. banks in the region headquartered in UK operating in Europe or headquartered in Europe operating in UK mm -hmm. or global banks headquartered in America. So what does it mean? So that's something that uh, we can't predict today. So we have to be watchful. See, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that you know you, you, one is not watchful, but all I'm saying is that uh, I'm not trying to give you saying that oh, there's going to be a big problem. Okay. Is it another financial crisis kind of situation? So you're no longer saying it's yeah. as great as it was before. Mm. It's not that something we need to be worried about, but mm. you're very watchful of PSSI. Watchful of it could be more it volatile can, than the can, it can present It can present uh, challenges, it can present opportunities. Well, that was the TCS CEO and Chandrasekharan speaking with Rima uh, when they announced their last quarter results. Remember, today TCS has put out a cautious commentary to the stock exchanges. Let's go across now to a man who says it like it is, the former CEO of HCL Technologies, Vineet Nair, a man who understands this sector. Mr. Nair, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. You know, we've heard a bunch of things. We've heard that there are individual sectors, for instance, in the TCS case, that BFSI is seeing more headwinds than normal at this point in time, and hence the cautious commentary from the management. We're also hearing about discretionary spending not being as strong, Brexit and the implications of that as far as the Indian IT sector is concerned. Given what we are hearing today, how much of the problem that this sector is facing is because of global uncertainties and the global slowdown, and how much of it has to do with the fact that the Indian IT services sector business model requires a change, requires disruption? I think uh, to answer that question, we need to step back and ask ourselves a couple of fundamental questions. The total spend in IT technology across the world is increasing. The percentage of spend on technology as a percentage of revenue is increasing. And therefore, why are we talking about headwinds? That is because there are three trends which we need to keep track of. The first is that every single company is trying to become more and more efficient in the back office. This trend mm. started in 2008, where every single person wants to cut their back office cost by 10% per annum. They want to redeploy that money in front office, which is in analytics, reaching new customers, and deploy that money so that they can grow their revenue faster. And the third is there is a churn in customer base which is taking place. So new companies, new technology mm. companies, new fintech companies, Uber, Airbnb, all these companies are coming up at the share of wallet from the banks and the traditional companies. So if you right. are a company which is boxed into what I call the old customer and back office service, you will see a headwind. Mm. If you are with old customer in front office, you will see a tailwind. If you are with new customer in new services, you will see times and opportunities as never before. So the reason we are mm. seeing various kinds of commentaries coming in is because companies are finding themselves in different shapes and forms with portfolio in different zones because of which they are either facing too much headwind and they have not done enough to try and get into areas which mm. have tailwinds. Uh, that's the reason you're seeing different kinds of commentary coming in. But the trends which we are so seeing today, the there is nothing new in those trends. Uh, you're absolutely right. There is nothing new in these trends. And, you know, this business of digitization and going towards digital has been something that we've been hearing about and has been playing out. In fact, Indian IT companies have been trying to up the capabilities, specifically in those areas, uh, organically and inorganically. But what will be the consequences of these trends, Mr. Nair, as far as the Indian IT sector is concerned? What will be the implications on the margin story, for instance? I mean, is it time to say goodbye to the 25 to 30 percent kind of margin picture? That that this sector has enjoyed. What is it going to mean in terms of inorganic growth, perhaps much more aggressive inorganic growth to try and up the capabilities in this, in this area? What will be the consequences of these top three trends that you just articulated for us? 
I think uh, Indian IT is at crossroad as it was in the past and the answer Indian IT gave in the past is to create a new industry called remote infrastructure management, a new industry called business process outsourcing and because of these two new industries getting created, their margins were intact, their growth were intact and therefore they could manage it. So unless Indian IT focuses and creates a completely new market which is not lip service but actual revenues in front office, actual digital revenues, actual capabilities, actual acquisitions, actually feet on the ground, actual restructuring organization to be more front facing and less delivery focused, to be less cost focused, more revenue focused, to grab market shares in new customer areas. So unless Indian IT does that, I'm afraid what they did well with remote infrastructure and BPO, we would not be able to do in that future. However, I am optimistic on the same leadership in Indian IT, which could manage the storms for so many decades, that I think this is a wake-up call, and they would. And I'm sure there are something cooking in each kitchen in various degrees of flame, uh, and they will get rolled out. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that Indian IT has something cooking in the backyard, and they will come out with, uh, with this, you know, great investments in these new sectors. That's the only way out. Otherwise, you are boxed in like Dell was, like EDS was, like HP was, like IBM was. You're mm. boxed in into mm. a reducing uh, cost structure. So price will keep going down. Your cost can go down mm. for some time, but not forever. Therefore, you have to get out right. of this box. It has to be a certain percentage, but you have to get into a new box which needs new skills, and I'm hoping and I'm confident that Indian IT will get into that box, and therefore we will be back to okay. great, uh, high teen growth rates and good margins. Uh, you know, so let me, let me end by asking you that this new box that you're talking about, what will it take to, for the Indian IT sector to get out of this box and into that new box that you're talking about? I'm not going to ask you about what the stock markets will make, evaluations and so on and so forth. I mean, that is a quarterly phenomena uh, that will play out in the markets. But from a strategic perspective, from a long-term perspective, what are the strategic choices that Indian IT will need to make today to get itself out of the current box into the new one? I think the word transform means changing the form of something permanently. The word permanently is underlined. So the first thing Indian IT would have to do is to give up its obsession for cost and price and that box. So to, to say that I'm going to jump off the cliff. If they don't have that, then they will keep on putting their best and brightest in the old box. So the first thing they need to do is put their best and brightest in the new box. Number two, they need to shift their, move, their, their entire investments away from automation and cost reduction into revenue generation and becoming more relevant for relevant customers. And number three is they have to demonstrate tremendous amount of urgency because the market gaps are closing very fast. Like Indian IT took EDS and HP by surprise, there could be lots of companies, and I know a lot of companies, I work with them, that they will take Indian IT for surprise. If you are not urgent, if you are, do not demonstrate that urgency for investment, urgency mm. to move your best and brightest, an urgency to adopt to a new business model, which is completely different to our old business model. We did that with remote infrastructure management. We did that with BPO. I'm hoping yeah. we can do it with this also. Well, we certainly hope so. Vineet Nair, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 with your thoughts on the crossroads of the Indian IT sector.